Now, I may be alone in this, but I have written a whole lot of pretty similar scripts over the years that use the same tools to accomplish pretty similar tasks, like separate scripts to raise and lower and mute the volume on my PC. Another example would be in the video that I made about creating scratch pads in Spectre WM. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down up in the cards or down in the description or what have you. But in that video, I wrote three scripts that do basically the same thing. They just create a scratch pad, but call up a different program. And the thought hit me a while back while I was at work. Why not consolidate these scripts from six down to two and just use arguments to take care of the differences? So if I lost you there, let me simplify it real quick. So here we are in VIFM. And in my home directory, I've created another directory called Consolidated Scripts. This is a list of scripts that I have consolidated. So, hence the name. So if I go into this, you'll see I have BH Snapshot, BR Snapshot, Hush, Louder, Quieter, you know. So if I turn on my previews real quick, you'll see that Hush just runs a mixer dash Q dash D pulse set master toggle. It's a one-line shell script to pretty much just toggle the volume on my PC. Louder calls essentially the same thing. A mixer dash Q dash D pulse set and master 5% plus. And quieter does the exact opposite, master 5% minus. This should have been one script and just passed an argument to it. Let me show you what I did to make this better. I actually went a little bit overboard on this one. So this is called vol CTL. So vol CTL is actually a case statement. And what it does, it takes my argument. So if I were to put in max or 100, it would run a mixer dash Q dash D pulse set master 100%. If I were to enter raise louder or increase, it would run a mixer dash Q dash D pulse set master 5% plus. And then for lower, quieter, and decrease, it would run a mixer dash Q dash D pulse set master 5% minus. Now toggle, mute, hush, and zero. All that does is just toggle the volume on and off. Now min just runs a mixer and then sets the volume to 1%. And this long convoluted looking thing is actually just a a sequence of character, a sequence of numbers here that will allow me to Set the volume to either 1 through 9, or 1, 1 through 9, 2, 1 through 9, 3, 0 through 9, sorry. I can run vol CTL 19, and it will set the volume to 19%. Or vol CTL 73, and it will set the volume to 73%. And then, if I mistype something or what have you, it's going to print out invalid argument in red, and then give me what the valid arguments are. And that is literally the whole script. So now, if I exit out and then quit, let's say vol CTL max. So you may have a hard time seeing this, but right here, I have my volume set to 100%. So if I increase my font size here and say vol CTL min, my volume has been changed to 1%, or vol CTL increase, vol CTL raise. It went from 6% to 11%. So now if I do vol CTL 73, my volume is at 73%. I know it's kind of hard to see right here, but it does work. So now I have less scripts, but the same functionality, actually a little better functionality. Plus, other scripts are just a little bit easier to find when listing out my local bin directory. But why stop there? I took a look at all of my scripts and decided to, to consolidate the ones that I could into master scripts. And before long, I was able to replace three volume scripts with one, five scratch pad scripts with one, two snapshot booting scripts with one, three snapshotting scripts with one, four virtual machine scripts with one, and two Wi-Fi scripts with one. So I went from 19 separate scripts 
down to six, which is much better in my opinion. So here I am solving problems that I didn't know I had. <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the other scripts and see how I consolidated them into the new scripts without losing the functionality. So BH snapshot. So that's a boot home snapshot. If I go into this, you'll see that, you know, I declare my colors, you know, run as, who is who am I? And if it's not equal to root, it's going to error out. It gives me a, a restore point, restore ID, home sub vol ID. And it runs my seg command. And the same exact thing with BR snapshot. It is essentially the same script, except it's doing, it's, except it's interacting with different sub vols and, and editing a different line in my Etsy FS tab. So why have two scripts? Why not just have one called boot snapshot? So I still have you know the same colors and notifications and all, and then run as who am I, then it checks for root, and then I just create a function and a case statement. If I run boot snapshot root, it runs this part. If I run boot snapshot home, it runs this part. And I get a little notification at the top. Now the only thing I did not carry over from the old scripts to the new scripts is the sed command. So the sed command, I took out the dash i flag. And the reason being for that is because I wanted to have a safety net. So if I ran this script, it would output to the terminal what it would change. And then if I was satisfied with the output, I can go back in, add the i, and I'm ready to go. And I did that for both the root and the home. Now scratch.sh, this is the one for making scratch pads in Spectre WM. So scratch, and then I run a case statement. So if it's pad, pulse, VIFM, SFM, and FZF. So if I back out of this and then go back to my window, see I have a couple of terminals open here, but whatever, it's not a big deal. So if I go to another terminal and I type in, actually let's increase the font size so you can everybody can see, and let's run scratch dot sh pulse. Or if I run scratch.sh SFM. And all of these are actually set to key bindings in Spectre WM. So I can actually just pull these up with key bindings without, having, without ever having to type out these commands. Now, snap CTL. This is the replacement for snap root, snap home, and snap list. So this will actually create my root snapshots and my home snapshots and list out all of my stuff. I actually haven't created any snapshots in quite a while because everything has been so rock solid stable I just really haven't thought about it. So I'm just going to quit out of this and if I transition back to here and let's increase this font size and I'll run sudo snap ctl root and then sudo snap ctl home and then sudo snap ctl list and see i i actually have snapshots going all the way back to june of last year now the next thing would be my vm ctl now i'm not going to show this one in action because well i don't want to launch a bunch of virtual machines but anyway i will show it off though or show the script anyway so this one will work with sudo or do as. It's going to print out stuff in red, normal color, or yellow. And it goes straight into the case statement. It takes the argument start or dash s. And then gives me a list out in D menu. If I don't choose anything, it exits with zero. If I do choose something, it, it runs sudo or do as verse start choice and sudo vert viewer dash a choice. And then the same thing happens here on stop. It gives it prints out stuff in D menu. I can clone stuff and I can delete. Now I'm not gonna talk about spectra gaps. That's, not, that's an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. But this one, I will, I will give you kind of a spoiler. It's a way of getting vanity gaps like 
DWM's vanity gaps patch, how to get that working in Spectre WM. Now, Wi-Fi CTL is really, really simple. All this is, is just a case, a case statement. So Wi-Fi CTL, connect and disconnect. So judging by these two panes in VIFM right now, you can see that there's a ton of scripts here on the left and very few on the right. And these here actually have the same exact functionality, if not more functionality than all of these here on the left. Honestly, I really like what I've got here. Now, all this took a little research, some time, some trial and error, but from now on, if I write scripts that perform similar tasks, then I will probably do it this way. So that's about all I have for today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and if you think this would help someone, go ahead and share it. If you'd like to take a closer look at any of these scripts that I detailed today, I'll leave a link down to my GitLab page in the description, and if you see anything useful in there, feel free to copy it or clone it or whatever. So with all that said, I'm Mike, you're awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.